Corley, if you'll move your amendment. I move. Uh, 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 I want to thank the deputies firstly for bringing forward this PMB and giving us an opportunity to have um, a, this important discussion on maternity services. And I would say at the outset that our amendment, as I've just moved it, is uh, submitted as an intention to be constructive um, and it proposes only to, uh, addition, uh, to make an addition to the, the PMB to strengthen what we believe is already a very important and uh, well-constructed PMB, but uh, what we offer is an addition to that. And I'd like to welcome women uh, who are watching this debate, and I think we make no bones about it, they are watching, um, because the issue of maternity services is one not just dear to, to my heart, but dear to the heart of many men and women who have had to use it. There has been a lot of discussion about maternity services, and I, I I noticed the little tit for tat going on there between the, the minister and his constituency colleague um, where they're pointing fingers at each other but I suppose it's worth pointing out at this stage that uh, you know, you, you refer to the amount of hospitals not built by Fianna Fáil, and indeed it, it's exactly the same amount of hospitals not built by your own uh, government of the previous eight years of a Fine Gael-led government because you haven't built any hospitals, uh, any maternity hospitals either. The, uh, but, this, but it's not built. So, you know, and again, what I said when I referred to the, that kind of tit for tat, women watching, they're really not going to thank us for that. Um, the issue of maternity services is one which I don't think anyone will, will disagree. I have raised consistently since I was elected. In 2017, this House passed a Sinn Féin PMB on maternity services, which called for solutions to pressing matters affecting the service. And I would really love to be able to say that the calls included in our PMB, uh, which was not opposed and indeed was passed, um, that, th that those calls have been implemented, but this is not the case. Many of the areas for improvement outlined that night in May in 2017 still exist, and two years later they are again outlined in this PMB. Women are still being denied a basic 20-week anomaly scan, and while I absolutely welcome the commitment given by the Minister that they will have access to a 20-week anomaly scan by the end of the year, um, we say I am sceptical, uh, <laughs> somewhat, and that's based not on any ideological position that I have, but merely a quick glance at the record, because there have been uh, a lot of false dawns on this issue. It is absolutely essential that the 20-week anomaly scan is rolled out. It is an absolutely essential screening tool. And every time I have asked a question about this, I have been told it's offered where clinically indicated, to which I have replied, how would you know it's clinically indicated if you aren't going to do the scan? So your commitment is welcome, Minister, and we will hold you to that uh, because it is a very essential and indeed a very basic service. We have also included an amendment uh, to make reference to the current newborn uh, screening programme. I was compelled to include this, having met with Les Martin, a very inspiring young father who is campaigning to improve our newborn screening programme. And I know that Deputy Donnelly and Deputy Harris know uh, Mr Martin well, as does my colleague Deputy Brady, because this is a young man from Wicklow. But I'd like to raise some of the issues that he has spoken about and speak to the solutions that he has proposed on how to improve our newborn screening programme and indeed to save lives. Newborn screening services in this state only screen newborn babies for eight conditions, whereas Britain screens for nine, Switzerland 13, Sweden 24, Portugal 25 and Italy screens for 40. The failure to screen babies in Ireland to a higher standard standard has had a devastating effect on many families across the state, including the Martin family, and I know that you are very much aware of this, but it didn't have to be this way. Les has gone to great lengths to highlight a solution. He presented this at an AV room briefing organised by Chapter Brady some weeks back, and he outlined what could be done and what indeed we need to do. We need to reform the newborn screening programme. We need to expand the newborn screening programme and guarantee that every child born in this state has the right to be screened at birth for any disease for which there is a viable treatment. That's what was done in Italy when they passed a law to ensure that every Italian citizen is by right entitled to be screened for at birth for any disease for which there is a viable treatment. A kind of, if you will, if the technology is there and the research exists and backs it up, well then we should use it sort of approach. The expansion of the programme wouldn't be a huge cost, but it would have a huge beneficial impact for families and babies, and it would in the long run save the state millions.
There are some points which I really want to cover as I finish up. Almost daily in here, we are reminded of the recruitment and retention crisis impacting our health service. The motion outlines how we have just two midwifery-led units in place and how we have a shortfall of 200 midwives below the recommended safety levels in the National Maternity Strategy and how Ireland's rate of obstetricians per capita is the, lowest, the third lowest in the OECD. You can't stand over that situation, Minister. It's not tenable and it's not right. The health service needs to do more to help women with disabilities um, when they are either planning a family or pregnant. Where a woman has a disability which makes becoming pregnant more difficult or carrying a child to birth more difficult, specialist medical help should be provided. This care should be continuously provided from family planning all the way through to postnatal care. And I want to finish by referencing the new National Maternity Hospital. I have included a reference to this again as I want there to be no equivocation. This Dáil Chamber agreed in 2017 that the hospital would be kept in state ownership and that the people providing the service will have the ability to deliver the service free of any non-medical interference. Can I ask that the Minister reaffirm that commitment and give an assurance that the hospital will be delivered and operate along these lines because there is still some confusion and indeed I get asked about this on a regular basis and we really need to hear completely and unequivocally that the hospital will operate free from any non-medical interference. During the campaign for the repeal of the Eighth Amendment, we had a huge amount of discussion on women's health and women's health care needs. This was very, very welcome, but the fine words contrast with the lived experience of women who actually use our maternity services. The standards of care fall well below that which women should be entitled to expect. The postcode lottery that exists is not acceptable, and there is no reason why an expectant mam in Mayo or Leash or anywhere else should expect to have less, to get less from the maternity services than an expectant mam in Cork or Dublin or Waterford. We have a strategy, Minister. We need funding and we need a commitment that that strategy will be implemented. Women and babies deserve much, much more than just fine words. And if I could, just to be a small bit parochial for a moment, the Rotunda is back in the headlines. The Rotunda is an absolutely fantastic hospital and indeed um, many of the, the babies from my own constituency travel there to, to be born. Um, it is a fantastic facility, but the Rotunda is an old building. It is no longer in many, many parts fit for purpose. It requires a small investment and yet we are told repeatedly that this would be put off because at some stage some hospital is about to be built, but in the here and in the now. Mothers from Fingal are having to travel into the Rotunda to deal with uh, a hospital that is really not fit for purpose in parts. It requires a small investment. We are not talking about a massive investment, but you can't keep putting them off and saying, well, we will invest, we've no need to invest because we will be building a new hospital. At this stage, a small investment is, in, is required for the neonatal unit in the Rotunda. And I know that you were aware that there were some difficulties there. These are back in the news. The last thing that the men and women who work there want to be talking about is the difficulties. They went into the job that they went into in order to be able to bring babies into the world, not to constantly have to grapple for resources. So I would say to you that women in my constituency, expectant mothers in my constituency, deserve a better infrastructure than the one that which they are offered uh, at the moment. Gormai,